After being shown a map that is said to reveal the location of the lost treasure of Alexander the Great, Chris Quatermain and company set out to find the treasure before an arch rival who also possesses a copy of the map finds it first. I had actually seen High Adventure many years ago, but I was hesitant about seeing it at all because the cover art it sported at the time made it look like a kid's movie. And then later it was re-released with a different cover that was much better than the one it had. And I decided to first look up a few reviews and I came across this weird one on IMDb that complained about a scene where a truck drives off a cliff and crashes but doesn't explode. Apparently this person had a big issue with this truck not exploding. And I thought, well, that's not exactly a reason to skip the film entirely, so I decided to see it because of that. And as it turns out, it was actually a fun little adventure movie featuring a very likable cast, especially Thomas Ian Griffith, who does a tremendous job of playing this likable scoundrel slash adventurer who thinks the world of himself. He actually has a couple of endearing qualities in this movie. But there is not a weak character in this entire film. Even the antagonist is intriguing. And even though this isn't your typical high-budget Hollywood blockbuster, this movie does a lot of things better than most blockbusters these days in terms of story characters. It's even good editing-wise. The direction is on point. It's actually a well-made movie. And while the plot is very intriguing and also at times very funny, featuring also a few memorable lines that come out here and there. It's mainly towards the very final moments of the film where it starts getting a bit predictable, where it brings out the obvious tropes seen in other films of the same genre. Although many reviewers would refer to them as cliches, but nowadays it's referred to as fan service. So I don't think it counts as a flaw anymore, so I believe that it was probably not intended to be a fan service, but if it was, looking at it as if it was intentional, I would say it definitely understands subtlety and is, was able to work it into the plot very effectively without making it too obvious. And it's also consistent with the characters' behaviors, personalities, you would end up thinking, yes, this character would have done that exact same thing, even though you could have seen it coming a mile away. Overall, this is a film I'd say you don't have to skip or be hesitant about seeing. It's actually a very fun adventure movie, and the truck not exploding wasn't exactly an issue. Frankly, this film feels very grounded in reality, although here and there it does stretch plausibility a little bit. But the fact that it does feel ground it gives it this kind of humble feeling that yes it knows exactly that it's not a major production so it keeps things down to earth which i actually have come to appreciate since hollywood blockbuster seems to be more content with taking liberties with plausibility while this film is rather more concerned with plausibility although it does stretch it here and there and at the end, I would say High Adventure is worth uh, checking out, and nobody needs to be hesitant about seeing it, as you will have a good time. And if you're looking for a decent throwback to classics of the same genre, High Adventure does, in its own indirect way, provide a bit of fan service. So with that said, I will give High Adventure a 6 out of 10.